So the next stage of the mead making project is actually start the fermentation off. But before we can do that, everything needs to be sterile. Um, otherwise, we might get uh, the wrong type of yeast or bacteria um, in with the, um, the must. So the fermenter needs to be sterilised, so I'm going to be filling that up with the sterilising solution. And in this 56 litre uh, pan, um, I'm going to be adding some of the sterilising solution to sterilise the siphon and the stirrer and the airlock and the bung. Um, so hopefully we don't get any problems with the fermentation. Look, I'm now boiling, at least in the process of boiling, one quarter of the water which is on the recipe. And once this um, water is boiled, um, I'll take off the heat, add uh, the yeast nutrient, and uh, then this bucket of honey. So if you remember from the last instalment, or instalments back, we worked on um, bucket number six, and um, <clears throat> that went through the settling tank through a, a filter. And then I decanted it into this bucket, and now I'm going to pour the honey Whoa, into this. There we go. Now what the recipe says is that the honey will initially sink to the bottom of the, the pot and what I need to do is um, ladle in some of the uh, other water which is to the top and just swish it around this bucket just to get the last um, dregs of the honey. Uh, and bearing in mind that uh, during a bee's lifetime, the honey bee's lifetime, um, they would only produce um, a thimble full of honey, then, then perhaps um, out of respect to the honeybees, try and get every last drop out. Okay, this is the fermenter. I filled the fermenter with it's about 12 litres or perhaps nearly 3 gallons of cold filtered water and what I will be doing in a minute is transferring the mead and water solution into the fermenter and then Hopefully, the fermentation process will begin. So there we go, we've got the, the, a very nice setup of the, the honey water. Now going into the fermenter. Um, via the siphon. And there we go, I've got the um, hydrometer in there, when it comes to 
later on in the process we, we can then compare it and see how much fermentation has been done or not. Okay, I'm just gonna screw this airlock on like so. Now <laughs> what the recipe um, suggested that I fill the airlock with vodka and I suppose it makes sense the vodka will uh, make sure the inside of the airlock is um, sanitized and if it does get overfilled by um, perhaps a careless beekeeper then um, well vodka will end up in the fermenter which uh, may not necessarily be a bad thing vodka Um, the recipe or the, the book suggests that if you use something like vodka, um, the downside is you have to keep um, topping up the airlock a little more frequently because I think vodka being that little bit volatile, it sort of um, disappears into the atmosphere. But um, we'll keep an eye on this and see what happens. Okay, um, where do I put it? Now the kitchen seems to be the most um, appropriate place. To put the fermenter, it's nice and warm, especially with, with the Rayburn on, nice and toasty. Um, but it is, it is a big boy. But what I plan to do is there's the Rayburn there, let's pop it in that corner on the trolley and keep an eye on it. So there we have it, there's the fermenter uh, with its airlock on um, and we'll we'll see what happens it should be in a quite nice place close to the Rayburn so um, we'll see what happens over the next coming weeks